I was a young man in the project of Southwest DC. By then, no, we moved out of the project and I was a young man on my own, working for the government and trying to find my way in my 20-something skin. And part of the struggle that I had was who I was as a young person. I was never a club kid. I was never kind of a social bug. I liked people and I hung out with people, but I didn't feel like I needed to go out to be myself. And one of my friends had convinced me to join them one night at a popular club in DC called Track. And it's not that I don't love dance and I won't get down with the best of it, but I just didn't want to be in all of that thatness. And um, I went anyway. And I remember being on the dance floor and kind of praying, like, God, you know I don't do this, I like people, I like being a part of the community, but I don't really like hanging out like this. So that helped me reconcile it. And I promise you, as I was praying this prayer on the dance floor, this man's voice came over those speakers. And I didn't know until he started to sing that the word of God or these inspirational words and a funky house beat could meet me exactly where I was. But it did has and the voice of Kenny Bobian has rectified my mind and restored my joy and kept my feet dancing for the last 25 years and it is with great honor, joy, and aplomb that I say today that my guest is the legendary Kenny Bobian on this edition of Now What with Kevin E. Taylor. One foot in front of the other forward and tell you um, so I want to know yeah so we'll talk about it. I can't even tell you how your voice has met me in places when I had prayed to God about just stuff I was struggling with mm -hmm. and then kind of wanted to escape you know let's yeah. just go hang out and yeah. it met me there but how did because um, when you really think about who you are as an artist and what you do mm -hmm. how did the the, 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 the work of ministry because that's what you do over the microphone yeah come to a young man set to house music because is it it wasn't as revolutionary for you as it felt to me that you know I'm gonna take this dance music this disco sound or whatever mm -hmm. they call it and set it to music in the beginning kind of you know and when I say kind of I say it I've always been different kind of like you never fit it in I don't know there were times in, uh, in my young age where I wanted to but then there were times, I guess that's that revolution thing. There were times I didn't want to. I just wanted to be who I was and, and what was coming through. And that's how it was with, you know, with gospel music with me, growing up in the church. I mean, I grew up in one of the, you know, the churches in Newark that was responsible for the way gospel music was shaped back then. You know, everybody knows the Banks brothers and... Uh, Jeff and Charles Banks. Well, Bishop Jeff Banks was my pastor. You know, the Revival Temple Mass Choir were big recording artists on uh, Savoy Records. I sang in the choir. My mom sang in the choir. And um, being there, you know, you saw artists like Shirley Caesar and Dorothy Norwood and Mahalia Jackson and different people coming through. Bishop played for Mahalia for years. And um, I knew, you know, growing up in the choir, and I knew I wanted to be a gospel singer. But, you know, I didn't want to, um, I don't know, I, maybe I shouldn't say play the game, because a lot of people believe that because it's gospel music, there's no game. There's but no, there no is, politics. Yeah, yeah. Of course it is. And I just didn't want to do it. You know, I'm like, look, I can sing, you love me, you, you, you say there's something special there, you said what you heard is just out of the norm and he needs to be embraced and, and, and he, he loves to sing, he wants to have a career, but I didn't feel that. I, you know, I felt kind of like, you know, if I wasn't part of the clique, it wasn't going to happen. So with that being said, um, with house music and, 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 you know, bringing the gospel to the house music, it kind of wasn't a, a planned thing. You know what I mean? Well, I didn't plan it. It, it just happened, and it kind of was a good thing because it was something different. Um, it was something that, that people wasn't used to, but it worked for me. 
And so you said, was it planned? So how, so what's the first song? And you got these lyrics. And when you could have just slowed the, the right. Dun, 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 dun. right. You know, what, <laughs> after, what you, happened after you are my friend, because I, you know, when I did the remake of You Are My Friend, um, I don't know who Patty was talking about, but I know who I was talking about, you know, and I wanted to say something to God because for a long time, he was the only one that I could talk to, you know. Uh, he was the only one that, that I felt understood, you know, me and and what I was dealing with at that time in my life. So I wanted to give something back to him with absolutely no idea, Kevin, that this song was going to do what it did. So did you, had you, had you vocally ever been compared to Sylvester? Cause Always. You, so, okay, so you knew going Always, in. Always, yeah. yeah. But, and then, but see, Patty was my favorite. Patty, my three, Patty, Luther, Jennifer Holliday. Mm. Thank God I had the opportunity to work with all of them. Wow. You know, and, and just, um, it was just, it, it wasn't planned that way. But then after that, we did Just Keep Reaching. People were being inspired. And I'm like, wow, people were being inspired. At that time, you know, emails weren't as big. Right. And the, so we were getting the fan mail. You know, and when you get a fan mail and you open up a, a, a letter from a, 15 or 14 or 16 year old kid who says I was going to commit suicide you know and I heard you are my friend you know I'm a waterhead so if the water works come go I will I'm join you I promise you I'm very you will not cry alone I they, um, you know when you open up that letter and you see the 16 year old kid who's been struggling with his identity you know and people in his family don't understand and, and when he says I was looking at listen to your song that I listen to every morning, you know, that says, I've been looking around, but you've been there all the time. You know, he said, it stopped me. You know, I threw the pills away. I found a reason to live in your lyrics. You know, that did something for me. I said, I'm doing something right. Something, something's right about this. So that's when while we sing and, and you gave me love and, and brighter day, you know what I'm saying? Those, those, those lyrics were birthed out of uh, uh, an experience. Those lyrics were birthed out of my relationship with God, you know. And I knew once we got it started, people's not going to hear it the same way we hear it. Everybody, everybody didn't grow up in the Children of the Dark Wild. Everybody didn't grow up going to YPWW. Everybody, everybody didn't grow up doing that. Right. You know, and there are some people who will never step foot in a church right. But love God. And some people who will never step into a church but who get ministered to on Saturday night. Thank you. Because what what you were able to create, and I don't want to get get too, too fast in this, but what you were able to create was this kind of turn mm -hmm. in the club where can it, you know, so first Without thing, even knowing without it. Without even really. knowing it. It's like yeah. when we hear you, ah, oh, you know. <laughs> And when you get that, right, and we right. know we're going to be in that for, right. for a minute. You right. know, the DJ can take us there for exactly. half an hour, hour, two hours. So how let's take that, how did you decide when it was, like you said, reason why I sang or you are my friend is something that, you know, that has already been established. I think it was Father. Versus new stuff. I think yeah. it was Father. The song Father. Mm -hmm. They don't believe in me. How can I love someone I can't see? That's what they tell me. They don't believe in you, Father. You just come down. And... It was a, it was a, it was a prayer. Hear my cry, hear my call. Answer me if you will. I was really going through something, and not with with with, with the people in the clubs, with the people in the church. Mm -hmm. They were taking me through. How dare you take Jesus to the club like that? How dare you bring the devil to church? And I can't take Jesus to the club. You know what I mean? And didn't you, for, didn't you remember the Clark sisters almost got their throat cut? Tremaine almost Tremaine. got their throat Now they got a dude they can yeah. cut their throat out. And now, so they can what, be everybody, to you. And what are everybody doing now? Right. Now everybody wants, they're like, can you come bring me up one of them? I want one of them house records too. No, it's not about that. Right. You don't even understand what was going on in the initial state of all of this. They were really taking me through. And But what, what was it really? Because it wasn't just how dare you take Jesus to the club. What it was vitriol. It was a real kind of how dare you? Yeah. Because gay yeah. boys are listening to this, and the bulldog is in the club. Same thing. Listen, you know what I mean? It was yeah. really how yeah. dare you minister yeah. to those people? That's what it was. The bigotry, the self righteousness of it all. They forgot that Jesus said, "I didn't come to heal those that were already well." You know, you can't be a light and light. 
You know, you have to be a light in darkness. And there, there is darkness, you know, and some people need that light. But what did Jesus say? He didn't say, I'm going to send y'all a lamp from the cloud, and then you take that lamp. And you, no, he said, you are the light. You are the light. You are. So I'm going to use you. You're my ambassador. You're my representative. And guess what? You can't be a representative stand inside the church and the pulpit behind that lectern. You can't do that. You have to go where they are. What did they do to him? Why is your leader, your teacher, talking to in there with those right. publicans and sinners? And what did he tell the lady? He said, um, where are your accusers? She said, I am none. He said, well, I don't accuse you either. Go and send no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like you still have that modern day Pharisee, Sadducee. And the church doesn't want to hear that. No, they they don't hear want to that, you know. I have preached the story of Sodom and Gomorrah before, and I was like, as much as people want to say, you know, this story is a story of sinners and Sodom and, and homosexuality. And I said, what well, doesn't make any sense to me is why Lot and his wife and family would have moved there if this was where the gays lived. How did his daughters, it said that upon the, among the ten that were saved were her daughters and their husbands. Right. Where they find husbands. I said, it, exactly. and they said, I said, who doesn't want to hear the story right. of Sodom and Gomorrah being about inhospitality right. except inhospitable exactly. people? Exactly. People who said, how dare you move into our exactly. neighborhood? How dare you? Do? We work hard to work and live on this side of town. I agree. And you think you can just move in. And, you know, that revolutionary Jesus is something that people didn't want to hear. They don't. And that I don't even know if I heard until I heard you in the club. And right. I'm like, who is this voice I learned coming over the speaker? I learned something, Kevin. I learned that Jesus went through what a lot of people like you and me go through. He went through that very same thing because... When I study the word of God and I study the life of Christ, I realize that he did not look like the men of his day. He did not dress like the men of his day. That he did not talk like them. They were not used to seeing this. At the same time, he was a very smart, intelligent man. How could he go into the, the, the synagogue, not just answer the questions that are given, but then give us these questions and, and, and who is he? Who does he think he right. is? Who does he think he is? And you have to remember the story of the woman, you know, the woman whose daughter, you know, the woman who said, my daughter's grievously vexed. And he said, you know, you, you, wait a minute, back up, woman. You know, you can't eat. You know, a dog is not welcome to the crumbs on the table. Well, they were trying to appropriate exactly. him. Here, sit at the table with us. We right. will make you one of us. Mm -hmm. And that woman, sent by God, was like, yeah, yeah son, you, you're one of you're in flesh. Right. And they're trying to play you. Exactly. Get out of there now. Right. She, you know, I always imagine that you did the movie of the Christ, Life of Christ. That woman would be real ghetto. Right. Ain't nobody care about who you are, what you came for. <laughs> heal my daughter. I heard you was a healer. That's so serious. You can stay with these suckers if you yep. want to. Heal my daughter and get yep. back to your state. Yeah, and he so was like, oh, oh snap. He was like, uh-oh. Read. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, she leaving and yep. I'm leaving with her. Yep. But so, so let's get back on. I know. But, this, get, but it's the truth of it. Is. And so how did, you, how did you get sure-footed in that when the church was coming for you? And you weren't, you know, necessarily getting gigs every week. You weren't even performing in the clubs at first. So how did you know you were on the right path when, you know, was it the letters from the, from the young people? It was people? the letters from the young people. And then when the gigs started right. happening like they were supposed to, you know, like one gig a week turned into two, two turned into four. And then all of a sudden I was getting all these calls all over the world. But what? They weren't looking for Kenny Bobby and the artists. They really weren't. That's the thing that shocked me. I had my, my moments mm -hmm. where they was like, oh, we want you to take for this, for this, and we want you to do this, and we got hair, and we got makeup for you, and all that stuff. But these people that were booking me were reaching out. When you have someone like a prince or a, a king of some Middle East country comes and, and sitting in your face with tears in his eyes and say, listen to the words of this song. And I'm saying, sir, I know, I know the words. I, know words I wrote it. He said, no, 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 no. You don't understand what this did. It was then. Father was the breaking point. That song right there. And like you said, because it was a prayer. It was a prayer because I felt, I felt, you know, have you ever felt, Kevin, been in that place where you knew what you were doing, what you were supposed to be doing, but somebody you respect said something to you, and you say, am I supposed to be doing this? What? Because I respect them. They they usually write about everything. This is my... So, wait, wait. So, I, um, me and uh, Keith Hamilton Cobb on another show had this conversation. Mm -hmm. At 19, working at a good government job, I was a, uh, an older black man, austere, light-skinned, gray, and you know, salt-pepper hair, who I went to for advice because I was like, 
I, you know, he seems like a gay man, he, but he's definitely a grown man, and maybe he'll be another father type figure. And I asked him, "How do you have a healthy relationship?" Mm -hmm. And you know, it, 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 da 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 da. And he said to me something that almost broke me in half. And he said, "Kevin, you need to consider that you perhaps were just too much for a black man." And I looked at my hands and thought, "But I'm, so I'm too much to be me?" And it set me down a path that wow. broke me in half that I just recovered from. 30 years later, wow. because it said, you're too much. And, 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 you know, that's what it was in the hood before that. And here I am, a 19-year-old version, in college, working a good government job, no longer in the projects. And it's like, oh, is that why I'm alone? Because I'm too much? Is that why people talk about me? Because I'm too much? And, girl, that boy sound white when I say good afternoon, Taylor resident. Child, I don't know about to talk like that. I was like, but didn't I just? And so I know exactly what it was like, and I know what it's like before I got in the industry. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. You know, the three stars are supposed to be on this side of the yeah. camera and in this genre. They're supposed to be a certain size. It confused and a certain... me for yeah. a long time. Talk about that. It, it just... confused me for a long time. I didn't know what that, that I was. I know it felt right. It felt good. But for a long time, it confused me because I was young. Listen, when I started doing uh, music, my, my career started at, at 17, 18. You know, I was doing backgrounds for, for Celine Dion and. Teddy Pendergrass and people, I was in the studio. I was a, one of the most sought after background singers, and then I started out writing for people, and it was, but it was very confusing because I'm like, okay, if he said this, then maybe I'm, and then Kevin, you know, the family thing wasn't good. You know, that's something that, you know, I I, I talk about in my book that's coming. The family thing wasn't good. I didn't have the the, the full support of my family. You know, um, I went through that thing of, well, you need to go get a real job. That ain't no real job. And they were saying this even when you had videos playing on BET, it, yeah, still, it uh, still wasn't enough? Because it, or is it because fame didn't come at the level? Right, it didn't come at the level that they were expecting. And a lot of times people in your life, and we don't like to admit it because we love them so much, a lot of times people in your life, if they're not uh, the... Um, how can I say, if they're not part of the reciprocation, I'm not going with you. They have a yeah. whole lot Get of negativity. Get two tickets. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you just got $50,000 for them. How come you ain't throw me 10? Right. You know what I'm saying? If they're not a part of it, then they have, you know, and it's, it's, it, it's enough to make a, a boy cry. You know, it's like you can't support, now you can only support when things are going good. You can't support when I everybody hits that place right, in their life, right, right. you know. So you can't appreciate the fact that, oh man, I'm so proud of you. You know, I think that was out of my entire life, and you know, the, the the people that I know and the the large families that I have on both sides. I think there were only two people in my life like that to me, just two. You know, and one of well, yeah, it was only two, and one of them's gone. Mm. You know, and it was it was it was just a headache when I did father when which was from the Blessed album. Mm -hmm. When I did Father, I was at that point in my life because I was I was fighting with the church, I was fighting with family, and, and it, it kind of left me at a complete And fighting with the world yeah. that's trying to figure out right. who the is world. this dude and that's me. trying to figure out. And myself. Because right. I wasn't sure about, you know, there was a lot of things that was going on in my life, a lot of things that made me feel good and made me happy, but I was told was wrong. Mm. You understand what I mean? That's not right. You going to hell with gasoline socks on. And I'm going, I don't understand because it's God's will that I be happy. It's God's will that I don't understand. Maybe I'm confused about something. And I'm telling you, music has always been that very thing that God gave me. You know, it actually saved my life. So let's have a, so you, you, it's from the Blessed album. Yeah. So that's when I remember seeing, I heard Kenny Bowie many right. times before that. But working at BET early 90s, you know, we had uh, uh, video vibrations, and, right. you know, video soul. And so it was like a new video from Kenny Bowman. I was like, oh, my God, here he comes. What was it like to, 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 to be able to, to do that? Because you were now not just a voice, right. you know, coming from the speakers on Saturday, but to have everyday access to people to be able to minister to them. It's shoot that first music Wonderful. video. Wonderful. It, it, it made me feel like that. This wasn't in vain. Okay. 
You know what I mean? Like, okay, now we're starting to see. And then I'm hearing people like you. Even when they saw the video, they heard the music, and I'm hearing people saying, do you know for years I've heard your stuff, and we just couldn't put a face to the voice for years. Oh, I heard that song. I love that song. You know, I'm like, wow, you know this? I'll, I'll get on stage and start singing You Gave Me Love or saying something. And I'm like, oh, that's one of my favorite songs. I'm going, huh? Because people have been, you know, there, but it's like, they heard me, but they didn't know. But it's like, even, I go through that now. Been around the world, and I, I, I. And some places I go, <coughs> and they say, wow, you're Kenny Bobian? We know the name, we know the sound, we know, but we couldn't put a face to, wow. to the voice. Father kind of, you know, with, when it came to that gospel house thing, you know, and forgive me, I don't like labels, but I understand. I mean, but yeah, like that's your gospel house right. thing. It was you know spiritual I mean? inspiration. Exactly. Right. It was I, house. I, I get it. I get it. But when that when that happened, that turnaround happened, it wasn't it wasn't a good reception at first right. from the church. Right. Oh. Then I get these one story, this one story where this this lady was telling me um, she had given her sister a surprise party. The family had disowned her. She stuck by her sister. Her sister had been on drugs for a very long time. You know, her children had been separated throughout the family. You know, different family members had the kids. And she was at that point in her life where they thought she was going to die, but she lived. And something was happening to her sister. Her sister didn't know, and she didn't really know. She knew God was doing something with her sister, and they couldn't get it. Guess what, Kevin? What? They, they couldn't get it in the, in the, in the church. We went, they went to the temple. It wasn't happening there. Something wasn't happening. It wasn't that the, the ability of it wasn't happening. I'm not talking down right. the place of worship. Right. I would never do that. But it just wasn't happening there. She gave her a surprise party at this club. And um, she was on the dance floor. The friend, she was so surprised, the family friend. And the sister, the one who had, had the drug problem, was on the dance floor. I shall not be moved, came on. And <laughs> It came on, and uh, she was on the floor, and she started dancing, and she started crying, and they started, the way she started dancing, you know how we do in church, the people were saying, she dancing like she in church, because when they got to the stand, stand, don't do it, no, 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 no. we got to talk about it. <laughs> so, when they got there, they said, she's dancing like she's in church, she was crying, something was going on with her, so they ran in and got her sister, they said, we don't know what's happening, Something's going on with your sister. She said the moment when she walked in on the dance, the moment she saw, I get chills when I talk about it. She said the moment I saw her, I saw the presence of God. In her. I knew exactly what was happening. She said I walked up to my sister. She said and I stood with my back to hers. And she was going to. She said all right. She said I got you. She said I got sister, you. I got your back. Go she ahead. said I got you. She said don't worry like about Go ahead, let him use you. Go she ahead, said, let him use you. You know what her sister was saying? She kept saying I'm free. I'm free. That's all she kept saying. She said when she heard us, she said she just started crying. They didn't know what to do. She said, I'm free. She said, this is what I was looking for. They got mad at me because when they asked me, how did I enjoy the message? I said, I enjoyed the message. But she said, sis, this is, this is what, I, when she told me that story, Kevin, I started to cry because I said, you gave me my answer. This is my answer right now. This is the answer to Father. This is the answer right here. She wasn't in the temple. It wasn't through morning worship. She was right there in the club. Right. She had been to church. Because God is God Saturday night, Sunday morning. And so let's have a moment, because I was trying to say that, but you just opened the door. I'm right sorry. To it. No, 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 it's not because, 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 there is something in I shall not be moved. If you have a hit that you can't leave a room without doing it is that. You talk about something that transforms yeah. Yeah. and then transports at the club, you know what I'm saying? Yep. That people sitting over to drink kind of like, oh, y'all go ahead and get your little, you know, blessed or do whatever. When I shall not yeah. be moved comes on, yeah. people who, yep. yeah, I'm not, you, you're not, you're not, you're not going to make me quit my job. Right. And I pray for that job and I'm going to stand. After you've done yeah. all you know to stand, stand. There is something about conviction and I shall not be moved. Where did it come from? And did you realize when you write it that you were answering your own prayer, that God said through you, when you said, Father, you know, give me what I need, Father, am I doing the right thing? And God said to you, son, stand still, stay right there. 
I didn't I didn't realize Woo! that thing makes me I know. I know. <laughs> I didn't realize it until uh, afterwards. Okay. Um, we, were, the we were in the studio when we were recording it. Now, mind you, this is so crazy what the outcome of, of I Shall Not Be Moved. Because you have a process in the studio when we're recording. Right. And now, where when I first started out, they didn't have all the stuff that they have today. So now you can fly vocals. You know, so because we had to sing it all the way down. But now we can perfect those two points. I'm telling them, right? But we, they can fly it down. So what happened was the background vocals weren't, the background vocals were close. You know, you vibe with it with that stand still. I can add that then. You know, but the background vocals weren't flown. Oh. I was ad libbing without the stand still. Stay right there. How they, they jumped it together, this is how I knew it was God. How they jumped it together, we don't know. But it was where I you was. Were, you were, you I were was call a response with no response. With no response. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, well, it wasn't, yeah. Yeah, because when I was listening to it, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, there were no vocals. And every time the producers and the engineer, they was like, the engineer had to walk out the room. I was like, well, who was running the board? They said he had to leave because he couldn't take it anymore. And he said something was going on. Yeah. yeah. And it's every time that song, Liz Black, everybody, they're playing that song like crazy. It's like I did it yesterday. Just literally, God. I heard it, you can hear it in the car on a Friday. We're on, the, on the New Jersey Turnpike, and I promise you, that's the exact I didn't know set. at that time that God was using that anthem to answer my question until afterwards. Car, uh, KT Brooks, um, I don't know if you ever heard mm -hmm. of him. KT Brooks, same background on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, okay. He's one of, actually, he was one of my protégés. You know, we lost him early. You know, great young man, great singer, great songwriter. He actually wrote my song, Grateful. I'm so great, 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 grateful. He wrote that song. Yeah, and he, he was doing backgrounds with me, Keisha Hall, myself, uh, Ed Lugo. And it was just, we didn't know. I didn't know, Kevin. There's a lot of things that happen. I have to say throughout my life when they say God looks after babies and fools, I have to say that, you know, I don't. sometimes I don't know which one I was. But he just, he looked out for me because some stuff I just, I felt like I went into blind and he was like, okay, baby, come on. Daddy got you. Well, I mean, Daddy got you. You all right. You don't know what's going on right now, but I, I got you. Just go come ahead on. and just come on. And do, I feel like I went into a lot of stuff like that. And, and the outcome was like, you know, you just take care of me. That's what I feel with I Shall Not Be Moved. It's the same response that you have. It's the same response because of whatever was going on in here was going on in that studio and I was like really going through stuff and I'm like you can't move you got you you gotta be just like a tree right there planted by the river rivers of water you gotta make up in your mind it's a personal decision you can say whatever you want I'm gonna cry but I'm gonna stay right there I wanna give up sometimes but I'm gonna stay right there I wanna knock your block off <laughs> cause I can fight I can, I'm from but I will stay right the there from the bricks <laughs> But I'm gonna stay right there. You, 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 you open up the door for something. I want to open some room for it if you if you want to go there. Mm -hmm. But you were talking about all the stuff you were going through, and what was it like to be trying to find yourself while you were ministering out, and 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 not knowing the you you're supposed to find? Because the church the church will tell you this is who you're supposed to be. They will shoot all over you. You know what I mean? And when you're saying, "Why God not me, want me to be happy? Why wouldn't God? Why wouldn't? Why why am I not clear that God brought this to me?" Because it, it uses my gift and brings me joy. It was How you? hard. It was hard. It was hard. It hurt it. Um, I didn't have that. Like I said, God looked after me. And every now and then he would send people my way. You know, like I said, I had those two people. But he would send people my way. Like, I, would be, I could be somewhere and you would come and say something. And I'm like, oh, I know he ain't come in 10 seconds and just answer something. I've been praying for for seven years. Are you, are you going to do something? <laughs> and I'm praying for seven years. Hey, he come in 10 seconds and say it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Give me the answer. It, it was hard. It was hard for me because um, coming from a line of pastors, coming from my mom's a pastor, you know, coming from a line of, of bishops and growing up in church and reading the word of God and, and, and studying it at the level 
um, I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this. I, in fact, I probably know. I know I am. Studying the Word of God at the level that I was told that I should study it. I was told to study it a certain way. Mm -hmm. Studying styles. Yeah. But when I started looking and developing my relationship with God and had Him guide me through His Word and said, that's not what I meant at all. I'm like, wait a minute. Are you serious? It's like, I wasn't talking about that. They got that all screwed up and misconstrued. Because they were saying, that here's what I meant about this. When I'm talking about love, when I say that you don't have anything to say to me or nobody else when you don't have love, I mean exactly what I'm saying. Right. And, and the church, you were, stop. I, I remember the first Bible study where I was in a room full of women. And we were going through Genesis. And it said, and the woman ate the apple. And gave some to her husband, her husband who was with her. And to watch these women go, wait, 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 what do you, wait, 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 what do you mean Adam was there? I didn't, I'm not interpreting. I just read. What way? Or made we them in our image, male right. and female. Right. So people, I don't agree with your mother, father, God. I didn't ask you to agree with it. God said, exactly. made we them in our image, male and female. But that's the only time God didn't need to speak that, but one time. God didn't make the earth, but one time we didn't make, we didn't have to repeat performance of that. Exactly. It was hard. Gabby. I can imagine. I it was imagine. it was hard for me, growing up in church, and then, you know, being those the, that kid that just didn't want to. Uh, I want to use the word succumb. I want to use that word. Mm -hmm. That word. Succumb to those fascist ways. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I couldn't say. It. But wait, here was the confusing part. Come on, I'm gonna get in trouble again. Get it. Kevin, here's the confusion. You're going to dive in the water, dive. You are preaching. Your name on the door says pastor. You said I couldn't be that way. What way? What gave you permission to, to, to be who you are? Because I can see you ain't hiding from me, boo. So now you're saying what's good for the goose is not good for the gander? So you're saying, oh, I'm the pastor. I'm the bishop. I can do, I can do this, but you can't because you're going to hell. But where are you going? Because the last time I checked, we were both flesh. Where are you going? If I'm going to hell, where are you going? Because we're not going to talk about what just happened in your office before I came out. See, you can try to, to tip into this cool water and not dive in it. Hello? So. No, I understand. You know, I'm trying to be, I'm, you know. You're, you're right. You're trying to. I'm uh, trying to, but I'm just saying. That's what I went through. I went through that. Because right. now you're telling me it's you're okay. You're being by people who are really? displaying. But now I and, 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 and let's be clear, you're being condemned by people for just being Thank yourself. You. And they are bearing false witness because there's a wife and right. kids and you meet them at the same place you hanging out. See, I didn't want to say like, that. At least I'm not a liar because right. thou shalt not bear false witness is on the list. And see, I didn't want to say it, but that's but you exactly have to say what it is. Because, they, what it is. because there was a thing in, you know, where you hear that sister say, I'm free and you are just being your free self. And they say, you can't be that, but I can lie to my wife, right. be adulterous in my marriage and be duplicitous in my word and that's fine. Because at the end of the day, mad, I say preacher. And they get mad at us when they tell when I tell them, I said, well, I learned how to be a phony in church. Uh, That's why I learned how to be learned a phony. how to be a phony in church. So talk to me about, um, you know, you've gone through a litany of hits, mm -hmm. you know, over this 25-year career. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I'm a little taken aback that you just did old landmark like Yeah, I know. And, and I then know. as you are anchoring and going back to the old landmark yeah. and walking into the pastorate. Yeah. Tell me what pulled, A, that song up out of you. And then finally pulled you into ministry officially because there's a church coming on. Um, let me see. Old Landmark has always been one of my favorite songs. Uh, I could have not be very much. You know? Winter Storm Bells will keep Sunday coming up. Nobody, everybody. The, the, let me tell you, my mom got sick one time in Saba. My brother uh, called me and said, you need to get home. This was years ago. Uh -huh. I had Aretha Franklin's Amazing Grace in my car. Okay. Old Landmark is three minutes and 16 seconds. I got from uh, Somerset, New Jersey. To Washington DC in one hour and 46 minutes wow. with that song on repeat. Ding, 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 ding. I put my foot down to that metal and I know I drove 95 the entire time down 95 because there's something about the relentlessness of that song. And the, and the, like you said, the call, the built in call and response, but what are your it favorite was, songs? It was got? just, it was, it was one of my favorite songs. And when I saw the Blues Brothers, baby, when I saw the way they carry on. And Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi went to bucking up in the church. Shaka Khan and James Brown. And Shaka Khan, Khan James, James, James Brown. The song has always had, I always knew at some point in my life, 
there had to be a rendition of that song. That was years ago. I didn't know when it was going to happen, but it wasn't until I went to Paris um, and I performed at uh, June. And uh, they have a label and they have producers. It was like, Kenny, you know, we're doing a Gospel House compilation project. We want to use one of your old songs, but we thought you're here. You know, why don't we do? Is there any gospel song that you ever wanted to do? Dang! Old Landmark. Old Landmark? You know, Aretha Franklin and the Blues Brothers. It's like, oh my God, yes! The track was done. We had a conversation that evening after my performance. The next afternoon, the track was done. Wow. So when we went in, I got some singers together. We went in and we did Old Landmark. Um, I, I, all I can say is that what you hear on record is what's been locked up inside of me, you know, all that time. And ministry has always been a part yeah, of me, you, you know, yeah. It has always been, you know, preaching. I preached my first sermon. I was 13 years old. You know, it has always been a part of who I am. I just thought that I was supposed to do it the way everybody else was doing it. I thought I was supposed to talk about what everybody else said I was supposed to talk about. But it has been such a, everything about my life has been, I'm trying to find a word. I have never been like all the other young people that wanted to, to kiss the pastor's butt. Who wanted to hear the pastor say, I'm so proud of you the way you exegeted that scripture. I'm so proud of you the way you talked about uh, uh, Paul and Peter. I'm so proud of you, but see, they didn't talk about how everybody else went to Jerusalem when they had their conversion. Paul went to Asia Minor. He was ridiculed for that. See, I talked about that kind of stuff. Why didn't he go to Jerusalem when that was the traditional religious capital? Everybody else went there to get approved. Paul said, excuse me, to hell with your approval. I'm going to Asia Minor. Everybody else said Peter and John, they were true apostles. Why? Because they walked and they talked with Jesus. They know. Paul said, I'm an apostle because I had an experience with him. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And the contradiction of all of that conflict and today even all of that conformity, and yet almost half of the, uh, the, the New Testament belongs to Paul. See? Because he had a different experience. See, you get it. I love these people, these people, these people, these people. You get it. All of y'all came, came right with one book, but it was all at the same spot doing the same thing. I believe so much that that's the life of Kenny Bobian. Kevin, I really do. I think that's my life. That's why I struggled so much. That's why I went through so much. You know, I'm going through something right now. But I believe that because we are who we are, that there's always going to be that moment in our lives because we have so many people. I'm going to say this and I'm going to let you go. We actually have people that agree with us. We actually have people who think like us. We actually have people who say, that's it. But it's like they're so scared to agree with us in front of everybody that people are going to say, well, mess up their benefits. Yeah, back. like you actually agree with that Taylor and that Bobby. Mm -hmm. You actually agree with that. And inside they're going, oh my God, Kevin Taylor is saying exactly what I feel. Oh my God. And then mom walks in the room and goes, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm watching this queen on, on TV right. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? But in, in, inside they're going, I just want to say it. Right. Say it. That, that's what it is. Oh my God. I decided not to be that person anymore. That's, that's what ministry is. Right. So you started Joe's Church. Yep. And I love them. I want who you don't want. Give me them. Yeah. I'll take that. Kick them out. They got somewhere to laugh. Oh, no. She's, um, she's, honey, she's a lesbian. But did you know she was a great singer? Did you know she was a great drummer? Did you know she had a heart of gold? Did you know that that girl will do anything in the world for you? Do you know how much she loves people? I'll take her. Yeah. Give me. So you can't see her willingness to serve and her faithful heart because you can't look past her short haircut. Woe unto you. Because I learned, see, because I learned how to love people for who they are. That's who she is. I'm not going to do that to her because you decide you want to be crazy because that's crazy to me. You're just hypocrites. Jesus didn't like, he, I, you know what? I think God, he hated them the worst. Well, he said it. 
<laughs> he really did. He hated them the worst. Didn't he call them vipers? I just, d depart from me. I don't know vipers. you. Viper. You vile hypocrite. Not just hypocrite. That's already bad. That's where Word to the World started. That's how Word to the, Word to the World was birthed out of that. That's why we, our church is called Word to the World International Worship Center. We are the church for the unchurched. That's who we are. Word to the World International, International Worship, Worship Center. Center. That will be right about here. Yeah. Right. The church for the right. unchurched. I cannot tell you what ridiculous joy it gives me to have you here today. I, oh. And I have been at, so I'd ask God about what to do about, for my birthday this year, because we don't do anniversaries because we brought the two churches together. You will preach the word for my birthday service. Oh, I will be I'm glad to. That. I'm excited. I will be glad I'm excited. To thunder and lightning. Uh oh, they scared now because thunder and lightning have gotten together. Oh, my uh -oh. God. Look, I uh -oh. just added some more stuff to it. Oh, you be ready, Cameron, and say, oh, my birthday. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they'll be all right. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. <laughs> all our friends going, uh, Kenny, Kenny. We were trying to keep y'all apart. We got, I, I know. I, I know. knew it. I knew that queen was going to get Kenny. He's going. He was going. Appropriate. It's crazy. You are cool. Thunder and lightning. Batman. And oh my God. It'll be all. We right. got some more stuff going. It'll be on. all over. Yeah. In the morning. You got some stuff to do. Yeah. And Newark's the place to go. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. You, I'm excited. I love you for this. We shall not be moved. After we've done all we know to stand. 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 Yes, sir. Ow! Oh, Absolutely good. amazing. I love it when I call you Big Pop. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful to yeah. you, Big Pop. Yeah. Oh, gosh, thank you. Buddy or your crony or your mate. I am the alteration to your fate. I am the river to your riches when you have an empty plate. But do you hide behind bravado? Can't just tell me how you feel. How could you quantify your mother off in dollar bills? I took the red and hit you big enough the blue pill. Why do my cousins live in houses built on landfills? But when you open up your mouth, I think of landfills. Reaching a quota, you think I'm barely sober. Remember last October when I messaged you? Made attempts to be really vocal. Everybody wanted to poke you, wanted to coach you. Heard you were running far. Heard you knew man was in med school and he had a nice car. So when you think of me, you probably think of my mother. So yo, the way you want to call, you're probably barely sober. I'm deep in your unconscious, only thinking me for your unconscious. Like that time I had that gat in my hand and I couldn't cock it. They time to kill my brother and I couldn't stop it. Dream schemes and multi-rockets.